Hi, my name is Esther Nariyoshi. I am a US-based illustrator. And today we're going to talk about alpha lock, layer masks, and clipping masks in Adobe Photoshop. Adobe Photoshop is an incredibly versatile tool used by photographers, graphic designers, and digital artists in general. I've taught an entire class on how to use these different masking techniques on Procreate, but in this video, I am going to cover the same topics, but specifically for Adobe Photoshop users. All right, let's get started with alpha lock. What is it? Alpha lock is also known as transparency lock, which is a feature that lets you paint on a layer without affecting its transparent or alpha areas. For example, um, if I am to use my brush to draw a random line or shape, and I can turn on the alpha lock by clicking on this checkerboard icon over my layers panel, or you can also activate it by pressing command on your keyboard while clicking on the thumbnail over here on your layer. And then you will see these marching ants like a dotted line on your screen. So once that is activated, you, if you use a different color, for example, if I am using this bright yellow, or let's be more contrasty and use this bright orange. So with the same brush or a different brush, if I am to draw across the screen from left to right, as you can see, only the overlapped area picked up the paint. That means that whatever that doesn't have the paint on, which is like the gap in between, will not pick up the pixel. So this is really neat if you already have a very defined boundary and you just want to paint inside. This is what you can do with the off lock. Everything all happened on one layer. So you can unlock it after you're done. I can press Command D to unselect, or you can unlock the transparency pixels. All right, so that is the basics of alpha lock. By the way, if you are a visual learner and you wish to learn everything slowly at your own pace, you can check out my blog post, which covers the same topics, but in words. You can find the link below in the description box. The shortcut for the alpha lock is forward slash, which shares the same key as the question mark. So you can turn it on and off just by pressing the key. You can also access alpha lock by pressing command and clicking on the layer thumbnail like I covered before. That's what I use, um, especially if I'm working on the Cintiq tablet. Um, that is most convenient because you get to see the marching ends, which indicates the boundary of the locked area. For the structure of this video, we're going to introduce all three concepts. And at the very end, I am going to compare different use cases to give you pros and cons so you can decide what technique to use for your own illustration process. The second concept that we're going to cover is called layer masks. So as you can guess from the name, it also happens mostly on the layers level. So over here, we have created a new layer. Say now I want to have a stroke that goes like this, but I want to hide the part that overlaps with the flower. So what I can do is to use my layer mask, which is this rectangle icon at the bottom of your layers panel. So when you click on it, immediately you will see another rectangle created right next to the selected layer. And then at the same time, your color palette is automatically switching to black and white. So the black will conceal and white will reveal. 
So right now I am painting on the layer masks. As you can see, it's selected over here with the black color. It's a little bit counterintuitive at this point, but bear with me because I am going to use the black to conceal. So I'm drawing over the stroke that I want to hide. So as you can see, it quickly disappears, but it is still there. What I'm doing is not erasing, but hiding. This is also called non-destructive technique, which is really, really helpful for digital illustration. What I mean by non-destructive is that if I switch the color to white instead of black, so I'm pressing X on my keyboard to switch the color, and I want to paint over the area we just hid, and you can see the color will come back. So really, this is playing peekaboo. You're not really getting rid of the stroke. You're just hide it or reveal it. If you use a color that is um, between black and white and pure gray, you're, what you, when you paint over the area, what you're going to see is partial um, revelation. You reveal it partially, but not fully in the original color. Layer mask is a great technique for trying things out, especially if you have multiple concepts on the same layer that you don't know if all of them are going to make it to the final, but you also don't want to redraw everything when the client changed their mind. So what you can do is to have them on the layer and then hide it if you need to, and then reveal it just using the white color. There are two ways of deleting a layer mask, and they do have two different kinds of consequence or result. If you use your keyboard, after clicking on the layer mask, you will actually delete everything on the layer mask and restore whatever that was on your original layer. For example, I'm pressing the button right now, and you can see whatever I did on the layer masks is gone. So I'm going to undo it and try the second method. You use this second method if you want to preserve whatever thing that you have done on your layer masks. And what you can do is to press the trash can icon at the bottom corner of your layers panel. After I click that, you can see on the layers panel, the layer mask is gone. We don't see the icon. But also on the main view, we can see the result remains. So it really depends on if you want to keep the result or not. You can delete in one of the two ways. And the third kind of mask we're going to talk about today is clipping mask. This is my personal favorite. Whenever you're confused about all these options, just use clipping mask. That is my golden rule. So clipping masks allow one layer to define the visibility of another. They are crucial for texturing or and detailed image composition. So I'm going to give you a very um, simple example. Um, over here, we have a very bright pink table. Say that I am going to add a blue border at the edge of the table. So I am going to create a new layer above my pink table and pick out a color that is nice and contrasty. Let's do this blue and choose a brush that is super big for demonstration purposes. I'm using one of my own brushes. Let's try this marker guy. Um, I'm going to make it really big so you can see. So right now there's no any type of masking going on. So I'm just drawing a line across the board. And what I'm going to do is to right click on my blue stroke. Please notice that there can be two different menus depending on where you click. So I am right clicking on the layer name 
and then you get a longer list of menu options. I'm going to click on create clipping mask. As you can see, it has clipped off the part that is not overlapping and only show the part that is overlapping. So I'm going to do undo. So you will see this is before and this is after. So that is really nice. What I really love about this is this method is non-destructive, which means that I just added a new layer that did not affect my original art. So if I turn the visibility off, the art did not go through any changes. I did not make any permanent damage or permanent change to my original art. This is great for experimenting. And I can also use um, different blending modes to see different effects. For example, under the layers panel, you can see, um, for example, you can just go through the list. I'm using um, a stylus on my Cintiq. And you can choose whichever one. I actually really like this one. Um, and then you can choose a different blending mode. Still, all the changes happened on the additional layer instead of your original art. So who wins at the end? Let's talk about pros and cons. For Offalock, the pros are it's super simple to use. Everything happens in one layer and you can make a lot of quick edits and modify. And it's very efficient for the same reason. You can do fast coloring or texturing within the defined existing shapes. But also, because everything happens on one layer, you also lose the flexibility that digital illustration offers. So the more layers you have, the more flexibility usually you have. When you have everything on one layer, whenever you make one change, that change is going to be permanent unless you can do undo. But then once you leave the file, you can't go back. So this is also called destructive editing. It sounds really horrible. I will tell you as an illustrator, it is kind of horrible. If you can't go back, that usually means that you have to kind of recreate what you created before and make additional changes on top of that. Sometimes as an illustrator, or a lot of times as illustrators, you may work with clients who change their minds back and forth. And believe it or not, um, you do want those layers and you don't want everything happen on one layer. To think about this as a traditional artist, so if you draw a beautiful watercolor on your paper and all of a sudden the person says, oh, I want to add a farmhouse on that field. You probably have to redo it unless you do it in Photoshop or add some kind of digital illustration process in. It's the same thing. If everything happens on one layer, when changes happen, you will have to redo it. So the more layer, the better, usually. Now moving on to layer masks. The pros are, like I covered, it's non-destructive editing. It'll allow you to edit without adding permanent damage or changes to your original image. That also adds flexibility to it. The downside is that for beginners, it has a bit of a learning curve because you have to remember black conceals, white reveals. Um, that's not, I mean, it rhymes, but it doesn't come intuitively. So what I usually do is to try either black or white and you figure out you got a 50% chance to get it right. If it's not right, you just switch to the other color. So it's still easier than drawing everything all over again. And when it comes to clipping masks, it is super easy to use and it's super versatile as well. There are tons of ways of using clipping masks other than what I've just showed you before. Um, for example, um, I have created one action that will change the color beneath it. I'm going to delete this blue stroke so that you're not confused. I'm going to layer and down the list 
new fill layer and I want to create a new solid color. And you name whatever it is and whatever color it is. Let's see. Let's try a obnoxious green. Click on OK. So right now this solid layer we just created completely cover whatever that is underneath it. But I am going to right click or better, I'm going to hold my option key on my keyboard on a Mac. You can see this little elbow icon. That means that I'm about to create a clipping mask with the layer below. So we got the clipping layer situation. So what I'm going to use the solid layer for is to use it for a color picker almost. So I'm going to double click it and then whatever new color you select, you get to see it in real time, what this is going to look like in your composition. So let's see if I want to go for something that is coffee color, maybe a little bit brighter. Let's see. And then you can zoom out. So as you can see, everything happened on my clipping mask layer. That means that if I turn the visibility off, I did not make any permanent damage to my original art. I just have the freedom to try things out without committing. So that is a great benefit in my book in digital illustration. I hope you have learned a thing or two about masking options in Adobe Photoshop. My name is Esther Nariyoshi. I am a US-based illustrator. I would love for you to stick around and subscribe to my YouTube channel where I share my illustration process, my tutorials, and all my little golden nuggets in illustration. I also teach tons of illustration classes over Skillshare. Make sure you click the link below to claim your free trial. I'll see you in the next video.